Proverbs comes after the book of Psalms. Proverbs chapter 30. Verses 7 to 9. Esther, Job, Psalms, and Proverbs. Proverbs 30, verses 7 to 9. Listen to what the Bible says. Two things I request of you. Deprive me not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me. Lest I be full and deny you, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal, and profane the name of my God. In the King James Version, how does that verse sound? It says, Lest I be poor and steal, and do what? Anybody? Take the name of my God in vain. Take the name of my God in vain. The Bible tells us that when a person takes the name of Christ, when a person becomes a Christian, and they live in a way contrary to what it means to be a Christian, that they're taking the name of God in vain. Right. If, if I, uh, if my wife, when she, you know, when a couple gets married, generally the wife will take the last name of the husband. So if my wife were to marry me, now she becomes Bonnie Crespo. But, but she lives as though she's not married to me. She starts hanging out with other people, doesn't pay any attention to me. Then in essence, what she has done is she's taken my name in vain. She took it for nothing. It's the same thing when we as Christians do it. When we don't behave like Christians, we take the name of God in vain. Oh, and there are so many reasons why that's such a bad thing. Let me, let me tell you, that the experiences that we have, they, they can be used as what they call object lessons. It may be a physical experience, but God always has a spiritual lesson in it for you. And this experience with this, this Miguel Crespo, this, 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 this uh, scofflaw, this person who doesn't believe in doing things a certain way, he's caused me some trouble, but he's also taught me some lessons. Whenever I travel now, I have to carry extra identification. I have to carry my social security card on top of my license, on top of anything else. I have to carry my ministerial license as further proof of who I am. I have to be on defensive whenever I'm dealing with the government. People who don't know me, when they meet me for the first time, if they have anything to do with the government where they do any checks and they come across this, are automatically suspicious. Because when they see that there's a wanted uh, a warrant or something for a Miguel Crespo, they, they may automatically think, oh, Miguel Crespo, this is the guy who likes to beat his wife. And so my, I now have to work harder to walk even straighter to behave even better, to try and make up for what this guy has done to my reputation, who I don't even know. Does anybody see a spiritual application there? Yeah. Guess what I, st I got stopped on Thursday. Guess what I did almost all day Friday after that? Anybody guess? Praise the Lord that you were in heaven. <laughs> well, yeah, but I spent over half that Friday trying to fix my license plate light. I went to the junkyard and, and searched high and low to find the fixture because it was a custom bumper to, to find the right fixture to fit in there. I searched for over two hours through the junkyard, all the four ranges I could find. Not one of them matched. And then only to get home and come to find out that I could pick up those same lights at Walmart for $2 a change. <laughs> then I had to put the things on, you know, you to, and, and with the salt that hits the bumpers, they get rusty, and the sand because it needs to make a good ground contact. The light still didn't work. I had to splice the wires, follow it back, find where they were rusted, because just from salt and corrosion, clean them up, put them on so that my lights work. You see, I had to do extra. When I really could be doing ministry, I had to do this extra junk because I want to make sure that I don't find myself in a situation. Heaven forbid I find myself being stopped. You know, I, I support law enforcement. But heaven forbid I get stopped by someone who takes their power a little bit too seriously. Right. Heaven forbid I get stopped by someone who uh, doesn't, isn't very thorough. In other words, hey, the birth year matches, the description matches. You know all Puerto Ricans look alike, right? And just decides that he wants to give me a hard time because I'm a white people. Heaven forbid I decide to be foolish and 
you know, keep my hands down at my sides when the walk, cop walks up to the car, as opposed to putting them on the steering wheel the way every good citizen should. You see, now I have to do things, I have to go above and beyond because of what was done by this person. Well, I'm sharing this with you because it's the same thing for Christians. It's the same thing. Let me ask you to turn with me. We're going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Second Corinthians 5, verse 20. Here's the counsel that Paul gives to the church at Corinth. He says, I'll wait, I'll wait to, uh, for people to be able to find the text. In 2 Corinthians 5.20, he says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, and we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Right. Now, if we just try to break that down, that down that verse, what Paul is saying is this, you are a representative of God. And what is the rep that representative's job? That you, in the place of Christ, appeal to people to make themselves right with God. You, as God's representative, are to appeal in Christ's stead with people. Please, come near to Jesus. Give your heart to Him. Surrender your life to Him. But you know, it's very difficult to do that when we as ambassadors don't represent Christ properly. Why would somebody want to come to a Christ who is grumpy, right. who is judgmental, who is untrustworthy? Why would someone want to give their lives to someone who is a liar, who is hateful and mean? Well, you may say, well, Jesus isn't like that. Well, they don't know that because the only Jesus that they see is his ambassador. Right. You see, when you as a Christian, if you take the name of Christ, if you lie, if you cheat, if you steal, if you're impatient, if you're judgmental, what you do, in essence, is you give a picture to others of what Jesus is like. Right. You give also a picture to others of how other Christians are like. And then what are you doing? You are taking God's name in vain. And you make the lives of Christians that come after you needlessly harder. You know, there was a story that my pastor told me about an experience that he had at a... At a he went to a district to, to minister there. And uh, it always happens that the conference leaders painted a beautiful picture. Oh, it's a great district. Wonderful church, wonderful people. And so he was all gung ho, ready to go there and serve these people, only to get there and find out that the last two ministers before him ruined the reputation of the church by their personal conduct. And so he walks into a situation where the church is demoralized. And he walks into a situation where the neighbors of the church were, I know what that pastor did. I used to watch him do it. And now he comes in, and now what's he going to do? It took him five years to earn the trust of that community where it took the minutes for the other ones that came before us to lose that trust. You see, when we behave in a, in, a, in a way that's dishonorable, you make it harder for those that come behind you to be able to witness and to reach Christ. And really, what's our goal as Christians? is to introduce people to Jesus. Amen. We don't want to make it needlessly harder. I told you this was a short and sweet message, so I'm going to make it short and sweet. My appeal to you this morning is to not take God's name in vain. My question to you this morning is, is what are you doing with that name? If, if someone were to come to one of your friends, think of the friends that you have. If someone were to come up to one of your friends and say, uh, let's say, uh, I'm going to pick on Jim. You're the first elder. I can do this safely. We pick on each other. If someone were to come up to one of your friends, Jim, and say, yeah, my name is Jim Hammer, what would they say? Would they say, oh, I know a Jim Hammer. <laughs> That's all they need to do. They don't even have to speak a word. Or would they say, oh, I have a friend, I have a friend named Jim Hammer. Yeah, you know, and, and immediately... Their idea of Jim is passed on to this other person. It, that's just right. human nature. That's what happens. What would happen if someone came up to one of your friends and said, yeah, my name is the same name that you have? What would they think? Well, your response will tell you whether or not you're taking God's name in vain. Mm -hmm. What would happen if someone came up to one of your friends and said, yeah, I'm a Christian? Or I am a Seventh-day Adventist Christian? What would, what would your friend say? 
Well, they say, yeah, I have a friend who's an Adventist. They're good people. Or I have a friend who's an Adventist. And then not say anything. Which says more than the actual words. 